Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So, in today's video, I'm going to be doing the second video in my Pygame programming series. So, pretty much, Pygame is just a variant of Python, or not a variant, it uses Python, and it's just a module that you can download from the internet, which pretty much allows you to make games. Now, I hope all of you that are watching my second video here have watched my first one. I do apologize as I'm making this video quite late, two months later than my first video. To be honest with you, I just forgot about it. Um, and I wasn't really doing too much YouTube at that time, so I made that video, took a break for about a month, and now I'm coming back uh, making this second video. So I do apologize if you guys have been waiting for a while, or if that's uh, frustrating when you've watched the first video, and now you're not able to see the second one, as I've been there when I'm watching series as, as well. But I hope uh, you guys stuck around, and you're watching this one, and I am going to be continuing on with this series and posting at least one or two videos per week for this Pi game uh, series. I'm hoping to do at least 10 episodes, or not episodes, I guess, like uh, videos, where uh, I get into more advanced topics. So in today's video, like I mentioned in the last one, I'm going to be talking about uh, jumping and constraining the area in which your character can move. So pretty much, if you don't remember, I'm going to run the program here, just so we can get a quick refresher on what would happen last time, is we made it... So we have this little rectangle, moves around, pretty cool, but it can go off the screen. So we obviously don't want this, we don't want our character to be able to move off of the screen. So there's something we need to do to fix that. Now it's actually quite a simple fix, um, and I'm going to try to explain it to you so that it makes sense. Pretty much, uh, if my mouse is the character here, so actually let's just run the program again just so we can see it. Our character here is coordinate. Um, about here is probably about 250, 250, right? Because it's in the middle of the screen. And our screen's 500 by 500. Now, the coordinate of this character is actually stored in the top left. So whenever we draw an object or whenever we create an image or anything on the screen, the coordinate is always put in the top left. Now, a lot of uh, like games and stuff will do the coordinates in the middle of the character. And in Pygame, it's just in the top left, so that's something to note. So that means that if we're up at the top here, our character right now has a coordinate of... It's actually, it's probably better to do it in the top left here. Our character's coordinate right now is actually 0, 0 when we're in the top left. Powering um, off. Now this is how we're going to check to make sure that our character can't move off the screen. Um, and it's going to make things a little bit complicated, but hopefully you guys will understand it. Okay, so here, what we have to do now is before we move our character left, so before we change uh, our character's x position, we subtract the velocity, we have to make sure that when we do that, it's not going to be off the screen. So we're just going to do a simple and here. So instead of writing another if statement, which we could do, we're just going to do an and. Um, and we're going to say and, so and if the character uh, x position is greater than our velocity. So this pretty much means since we're moving left, uh, we have to make sure our character's position is greater than zero because we don't want them to be moving off the screen. Um, but if we did that, you would actually see that we would allow the character to move negative five pixels backwards because our velocity is five. And if they are perfectly at the position zero, um, then they would actually be allowed to move backwards five pixels, which we don't want to allow to happen. So we want to make sure that before we actually subtract 5, we can subtract 5 without having their position be less than 0. Hope that makes sense. And now, uh, if we're moving right, this is where things get a little more complicated. So we're going to have to make sure is x is obviously less than the width of the screen. So the width of our screen is 500. Um, I'm just going to punch it in here because I'm going to keep using 500. But typically, you would probably want to put like a, like a screen width variable up here equals 500 or something so that that way if you ever change the screen width uh, it would automatically change here and you wouldn't have to go back in your code especially if you had longer code and change all of the 500s uh, to like 600 or whatever you change it to just that's just something to note um, but you'll see here if I run the program and I've just done less than 500 what's actually gonna happen is our character if I eventually get to the right side of the screen is actually allowed to move off of the screen now you can see by simply pressing the left arrow key once, it moves back, and that's because it's allowing our character to move off the screen, but only to the position negative 40. Now the reason that's happening is because um, our character is actually still on the screen, um, technically if you're looking at the top left, because it's allowed to move, um, like the top left is allowed to go to 500. Now if we want to prevent this, we want to make sure that the character looks like um, he's not moving off the screen, we just need to subtract the width of the character. 
So when we subtract the width of the character here, this now moves our imaginary borderline back, uh, whatever the width is, so 40 pixels. So that means that the uh, our, the position of our character is not allowed to actually move past 460, which will make it appear as it's not moving off the screen. Um, sorry, I'm kind of explaining this kind of complicated. It's really not that hard to understand. Um, it's easier if you just visualize it yourself, kind of. So you can see now we're actually not allowed to move off the screen like that. Now there is a little black bar there, and the reason there's a little bit, there's like two or three pixels there, it's just because when I first uh, placed the character in on the screen, I didn't put it at an even number. So we're at like three right now, but since three minus five would be like negative two, it won't let us move backwards anymore. Um, you can fix that by just changing where you initially put the character. So if I change like the Y and the X, um, then it would work. So if I change this to like 450, it should work. Okay, so now up and down, um, following the same pattern as left and right, except we're going to be using the Y now. So... We don't want to move up if y is going to be, what is it, less than the velocity. And then downwards, and y is greater than 500 minus the height of the character minus the velocity we're going to be moving by. Okay, click F5. And then you can see, one second, because I moved our character too low on the screen, I'm having issues, so let me move back up higher. And you can see now we can move left and right. And obviously we can't move up and down because I made a mistake. Okay, so y is less than the velocity. If y is greater than the velocity and y is less than this. Sorry about that, guys. So now we're allowed to move up and down. And you can see if we get to the bottom of the screen, it won't let us move any further. And if we get to the top of the screen, we cannot go any higher than that. So we've successfully allowed ourselves to be constrained inside of this box. Um, now this works this is something that you use all the time whenever you're uh, making a game so it's very important that you do this at the beginning so your characters aren't going off the screen all right so now for the next part of the tutorial i told you we're going to be doing jumping now just a warning the jump code that i like to use is kind of complex so if it's confusing don't worry about it just kind of copy it into your code and try to understand it later um this is a more complex way of doing a jump uh but yeah, it's the way that I use, so I'm gonna be doing. So the first thing we need to do is we need to declare a variable. So we're gonna make two global variables. One that's called is jump, and this is just gonna indicate whether our character is jumping or not. And then we're gonna create another variable. We're gonna call it jump count. And we're gonna set it equal to 10. I will get back to those variables in a minute. Now, obviously we need to know when the user wants to jump. So we're just gonna put another thing in here. We're gonna say if keys, and then pie game dot Okay, underscore space and that's the code for the space bar so that means that that key is being pressed down then we're going to trigger our variable is jump to true like that now the thing is though uh, we have to think about how a jump actually works so obviously this is not perfect but a jump kind of works like a parabola so you can think of it as you start you jump upwards with an acceleration, you get faster as you jump up higher, and then once you get to the top, you have like a hang time or air time for where you're at, a position with zero acceleration for a certain amount of time, and then you start moving slowly downwards, you gain your acceleration, and you're moving faster downwards at the bottom. Hope that makes sense. So what we're actually gonna be doing is using um, like a quadratic uh, function to model our jump. Now, if you don't know what a quadratic function is, it's just something squared, pretty much. Um, this isn't math class, but we do use a lot of math in computer science. Uh, so now what we have to do is obviously, if we're jumping, we wanna make sure that we're not gonna be able to move up and down. So when you click that space bar, we no longer wanna allow our user to move upwards or downwards on the keyboard. We also don't wanna allow them to jump again if they're already in midair. So to do this, we're gonna create another if statement, which is gonna in, uh, encapsulate, encapsulate a few of these things. Sorry, I just messed up that word. Um, so we'll just say if not is jump like that. Cool, and let's go outside the brackets. We're going to tab all this inwards and then we're going to put an else statement here. And this is what's going to happen if we actually are jumping. Now, uh, this is all good. Now we need to work on what actually happens once you hit that space bar. So pretty much we want the user to be able to move up and then down. Now we're, we are going to allow the user to move left or right while they're jumping just because you can do that in real life. Like for example, if you're long jumping, you're moving forward, then you jump. Uh, so that's perfectly fine and we'll let them do that. 
now what we're going to do here is we're going to do uh we're just going to do another if statement here so we're going to say if jump count is less than or sorry is what is it is greater than negative 10. now there's reason we're using negative 10 i'll explain that in a second we're going to do greater than or equal to actually and then we're going to do an else down here and this is pretty much going to mean that our jump has concluded if we reach this else statement and in this case we're going to make sure that our user is no longer jumping so that he is allowed to move up and down and he's allowed to jump again and we're going to reset our jump count variable back to an initial state of 10. all right so now inside of this jump count here what we're going to do is we're going to move the character up by a certain amount of pixels now like i said before at the beginning of your jump you're moving slower and then as you're on the way up you're getting faster and then you hang and then you move down so in order to do this what we're going to do is we're going to change our player's y position or character's y position. We're just going to do y and then plus equals or minus equals because we have to move up uh, in pi game. Minus equals and then we're going to do uh, whatever our jump count is. So the variable jump count multiplied uh, or squared like that. Now what's actually going to happen here with jump count is after we do that, we're going to uh, decrement. I think it's what it's called jump count by just subtracting one from it. So this means we're gonna slowly move down. So we're gonna have 20 p positions that our character is gonna be at. So on the first iteration here, we start at 10. Our, that means our Y is gonna be moved by 10 to the power of two. All right, so it's gonna move 10 and uh, time to the power of two. So it's gonna move 100 pixels. And then on the next one, it's gonna move 90 pixels, 80 pixels, so on uh, and so forth like that. Now, because that is a lot of pixels, we don't wanna move that much. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of multiplication here just so, so that everything is kind of moved down a bit. So I'm just going to multiply it all by 0 0.5 this is the same. You can actually do this. You just divide by two as well. It's the same thing. I just like to keep it consistent with multiplying. So we're going to do multiply by 0 0.5 and let's just see how this works right now. All right. So you're going to see what's going to happen here. We're going to jump. It's going to stop and it's going to go up again. Now, the reason this happens is because we are squaring something. So the whole reason we wanted to use a, uh, a negative variable is so that it would follow the, uh, like the quadratic formula, right? So once 10 is the same as negative 10 in terms of the position. So what we need to do here is once we move up, we actually have to start moving our character downwards. Now to move our character downwards, we have to multiply it by a negative number so that when we're subtracting, we're actually end up adding that value, if that makes sense to you guys. So we're gonna make another if statement here inside of this uh, little jump count loop. We're just gonna say if jump count is less than zero. So this pretty much means a jump count is a negative number. What we're gonna do there is we're gonna set a variable called neg equal to negative one. Now up above here, so this means uh, if, well, we're always gonna do this, we're always gonna set a variable to one. Now, pretty much what's going to happen here is if we're on the negative side of our loop, that means now that we're going to have this, we're going to set neg to negative one and we're going to multiply by neg here so that we will start moving downwards. So pretty much once we get on the, the last half of our jump, we're going to start multiplying all this by negative one, which is ultimately going to move us downwards. And if we're on the first part of our jump, nothing's going to happen because we're just multiplying everything by one. All right. So now we're going to hit. I'm going to save, we're going to hit F5 again, and let's see what happens. So we can move, move, boom, jump around like that. And we can see that our character jumps around like so. And yeah, so this has been kind of a complex tutorial. I know I went pretty fast through a lot of this stuff. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, just leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to answer that. And the next video in this series should be out in the next two or three days. Don't hold me to that, but it'll be out soon, so you won't be waiting for a super long time. If you guys want me to continue with these series or maybe start another series where I do uh, other py cool Python stuff, let me know in the comments down below. And again, with this jump code here, a lot of you are probably saying like, oh, this isn't like this isn't like a real jump, whatever. Um, you can alter this in different ways. The formula that I'm using is just a really basic uh, quadratic formula. So if you were to change this and alter this in different ways, then you get a more realistic jump, which I can get into in another video if you guys would like. So yeah, if you guys liked the video and you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next tutorial.